Thank God it's Tuesday. I'm here on the 25th of June and I'm in Terminal 4 at JFK in New York City, uh, John F. Kennedy International Airport. Terminal 4, I'm in the Delta Terminal awaiting my uh, flight back to Austin. And I wanted to give you a quick tour of this pet relief center. They're all designed differently. This has a wave to open mechanism. And there it is. So these are all designed differently by different architects, uh, different engineers, different uh, accessories. So, uh, oh, there's the door, it's automatically gonna close behind me. And that's a nice feature, it's a touchless door. You just wave your hand and it will open. What is this device here? Not quite sure what that is. They've got an outlet here in case you want to plug in some kind of electrical device. They have a fire alarm system, which is nice. This is a very small pet relief center compared to some of the ones that we've toured. Here's a Dyson, the same company that makes those uh, relatively inexpensive or expensive uh, vacuum cleaning. Uh, here's your waste basket here. Looks like they've had some canines. I've seen a lot of canines in airport terminals lately. Here's your touchless uh, place hands here. And there you go. You've got your paper towel and your sensor. Well, that's some good water pressure. This is better water pressure than in the bathroom. I just came from the bathroom, number one. I try not to do number two unless I'm in the privacy of my own home or at least a hotel uh, where I have access to a shower. But look at the pressure here. And I'll tell you, this is a better pressure than I had in the restroom not 10 minutes ago. It was spitting at me. So there's your paper towel holder, that's fine. This looks like some uh, Gojo is a hand cleaning uh, apparatus. So this is a very well kept, very, very small, I might add. And here is the actual pet relief area. Uh, fire hydrant lets the animal or the canine know that this is a safe place for them to relieve themselves. And they also have what looks like a uh, apparatus for uh, drying that looks like that might be I'm not quite sure I'm not going to turn any of these water uh, uh, faucets on I don't even want to touch it because uh, I think you get the message this is probably a water hose uh, can you see that there? Some of you probably recognize this, you who have used these facilities before and know what uh, it all entails, but I'm reluctant to touch it because then I'll have to wash my hands and I just washed my hands and I don't want to wash my hands again. Uh, there's your fire hydrant and your artificial turf. Uh, and this is the area right here. Here's the bag so you can clean up after your dog. Please clean up after your dog. Pull bag. It looks like uh, they've got some bags here. They may need to restock this soon. Instructions for use. You put your right or your left hand. If you're left-handed, your right hand. If you're right-handed, your left hand. If you're, uh, if it doesn't matter what hand you use, some people are both left and right-handed. In, in, in the fact that they can use either hand to do anything they want. Uh, they don't necessarily have a, a Donovan, a Donovan uh, hand. So uh, I guess for the argument's sake, uh, sake, uh, sake, if you're left-handed or right-handed, and possibly not both-handed, you would use your right hand or your dominant hand, or p perhaps your, your left hand, uh, whatever hand that you're comfortable using and you slip that inside the bag and this is 
this is kind of interesting for people who don't own canines to see what what it entails to pick up animal waste. And there it is, that's the picture. The second picture is the animal waste being picked up with the left hand or the right hand. Whatever hand is, that you feel comfortable using picking up uh, your canine waste. And you grab it and you, 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 you grab it. And then you turn the bag inside out. I don't know if this really depicts that. And then uh, I guess this other hand, see, one hand is picking up the waste. The other hand is going to pull, if you can see right over here, it's gonna pull the bag over, over the hand. And that pull will be inside the bottom of the bag. And this is what it looks like when it's done properly. This keeps your hands free of any animal or canine waste and cleans the area as well. And then you deposit these bags in the bag receptacle over here to my left. Uh, here's a drainage port when I guess they clean and service these, uh, these areas. And uh, so it's nice that they have instructions. Maybe somebody's a new pet owner or a new canine owner and is not familiar you know, it's like the seatbelt on an airplane. They have to tell people how to buckle and unbuckle that seatbelt because maybe they have not experienced that combination of belt or male or female interlocking device. Maybe they haven't flown before. Maybe they're not familiar. So every flight, uh, people have to be in reintroduced to the proper application of the seatbelt. And this case could very well be the same uh, situation uh, instructions for use on these bags. So there you have it. Number one, place hand into bag. I don't know if you can see this. Number two, pick up waste and turn bag inside out. That would be number two right there. He's turning the bag or she's turning the bag inside out. And then uh, and step three, tie a knot and dispose in the disposal area. So there it is. Please clean up after your dog. So that's it. I think this is it. Nice reset lighting, if that's what I can call it. Look how high this ceiling is. This ceiling is higher probably than the ceiling in the terminal. I mean, it's unbelievable. I can almost touch the ceiling in the terminal. Uh, I don't know who is designing these airports. Uh, and those comfortable seats uh, are now being replaced by uncomfortable seats. It's like sitting on a piece of plywood. So things are getting, you know, it, it, it appears things are getting worse instead of getting better as far as our architectural companies or representatives are doing. They're really, they're really dumbing down architecture but that's my opinion, it may not be your opinion, but I like high ceilings, I think everybody does. So I'll, I'll stop on that. So I think I'm gonna back out of here now. I didn't really wanna to touch this. Uh, I think this is a, a device that sprays uh, uh, scented mist, mist, and it looks like it's on a timer. Time mist it's called. Let me see if I can get a close you might want to get this, or you can probably find this someplace and have this installed in your own home. Perhaps a shed or a garage or a, or even a, a, dog, a dog run or a canine run area or any area that you think needs a little bit of uh, TLC considering uh, what the area is like in that area. So that's it. I'm going to back out here now. And I just hope, uh, what do we got? Nine minutes, just a 10 minute uh, little, I'm gonna use this wave feature here. I don't know what this is. This looks like it could be a, if you push that button, you might cause an alarm or a siren. This would attract first responders of some kind or something. I'm not sure, I'm not gonna try to guess. Let me know in the comments if you know exactly what this device is. And this is like the clap on, clap off here. Wave to open. Can you see that? 
All right, I'm not using the Brian Redpan selfie stick. I have the one I got in Rome. I'm afraid of losing that Brian Redpan selfie stick, so I opted that to leave that in Austin, and I'm using this one if this one gets lost or stolen, misplaced or broken. It won't hurt me at all. So that's that. So that's, uh, I guess it's self-explanatory. I, I just don't want to, I don't want to mess with it to tell you frankly, but I think it's important that you just see the different designs of each uh, uh, pet, pet bathroom, I guess, for lack of a better term. These are bathrooms for, uh, for canines. Okay, I'm going to get out now. And, uh, there it goes. See the way it opens? Look at the way it opens. Bam. Just like that. I'm out. And then it has a little timer on it. And it'll close. It'll close. There it goes. And it's going to close. And I'll just get back here so you can see the whole area. And that's how it is. Now I have to be careful because I am in the United States. And uh, you get this iPhone 12 Max Pro in the wrong person's face and they will just lose it. They will, they will just lose it. So have a nice day. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this short presentation of the pet relief area. And it even has, uh, it even has, uh, it even has the, uh, the uh, nomenclature for the people who are vision impaired, they can touch this and it has raised, uh, and that makes sense because a lot of dogs service uh, people with uh, seeing impairments. So it makes a heck of a sense. And there's a picture of your canine. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna close it now before I get very nervous in America when I do these presentations because people are just, they're out of control. They're afraid of their image. They're not comfortable with their image. And they don't wish to share that image. Well, they should walk around with paper bags on the top of their head. Yeah, walk around with paper bags on your head. And just draw a smiley face. All right, I'm gonna cut it here. Enjoy the rest of your week. Tomorrow's Wednesday and uh, hump day, as they say. <laughs>